Hello, and this time looking at um, how to simplify when you've got uh, two trig functions, a sine and a cos, and there's coefficients in front. So this might be something like uh, 4, uh, sorry, let's put cos first, 4 cos x plus 5 sine x, something like this. And what we can do is we can um, simplify this into something that looks like r of sine x plus a number. Or we could make it as r, sorry, cos of x plus a number. So it's kind of like doing the reverse of the double angle rule. It's sort of saying, okay, well, you know, if this did magically turn out to be, you know, uh, if this was a double angle rule answer, um, then what would the values of r and a need to be so that it could work backwards? Because if you think about expanding this forwards, then um, the double angle rule here is going to give you um, sine x cos a uh, plus cos x sine a. And um, and also we've got this coefficient out in the front. Um, and what we're saying is that that r and that cos a need to, oh no, need to equal 5. And that r and that sine a need to equal the 4. Uh, and we can do it with the cos as well. Because um, we can look at that and say that this is r uh, cos x cos a. Ooh, is that minus? I think that's minus. Struggling to remember my uh, addition rules. Um, R sine x sine a. And again, in this situation, the R and the cos a are going to be 4, and the R and the sine a have got to, uh, yes, R sine a needs to be 5. And um, just by looking at the coefficients, saying, oh, well, you know, if this thing is supposed to equal this thing, then r cos a has to equal the 4, and the r sine a has to equal the 5, and in which case, once we know what those values are, we can write it in this form. Now, sometimes that's really helpful uh, because it allows us to uh, solve it in a different way, or it allows us to uh, maybe draw a graph of it because, uh, you know, if we have it as y equals, uh, in this state, we can see that it's just transformations of graphs. We know it's the cos x graph, the plus a is going to move it to the left and the r is going to stretch it uh, vertically. So it might be that it allows us to solve a, a problem having it in this form that we can't have it in its separated form. Right, that's enough of me rambling on. Uh, let's have a go at a uh, an example, see if I can uh, work through it. So here we have um, some expression, cos 2 theta minus 2 sine 2 theta. So I'm a bit worried we've got double angles all of a sudden. Um, that might add a complication. And give it in the form of r cos 2 theta plus alpha. r needs to be greater than 0, and alpha needs to be between 0 and uh, pi over 2, which is uh, means it's acute angle. That's 90 degrees in, in uh, degrees. So I'm not actually concerned this 2 theta anymore, because although it's here, it's also in this bit. So I think they've just thrown that in just to try and worry you. Um, so let's give it a go. Let's start with this thing and have a look at what this would look like if we expanded it. So r cos 2 theta plus alpha, put a bracket around that. So the addition formula would give this as cos of the first times cos of the second minus sine of the first um, sine of the second. And of course, we've got an r out in front here, so we need an r uh, multiplied through there as well. OK, and what we actually want here, we've just got cos 2 theta, which we've got here, cos 2 theta, so that's nice. But there's nothing else. There's just, yes, it's just a 1, isn't it? So that means that this thing, r and cos alpha, r cos alpha, it's got to equal 1. And here we've got minus 2 sine 2 theta, so we can write that sine 2 theta, which means that r and sine theta needs to equal 2. So do that as well, r sine alpha, did I say theta? I'm not sure. r sine alpha has to equal the 2 there. OK, and now in order to get r and theta, we've got two equations, two unknowns. It's simultaneous equations. And there's a little trick to, to get each of them. Do theta first. 
done it again, alpha first, uh, by dividing them, because we know that sine over cos is the same as tan. So if we do the second one divided by the first, we're going to get sine over cos, or tan alpha, equals 2 over 1. Okay, what's happened to the r? Well, if we have r over r, yes, r sine alpha over cos, um, r cos alpha, the r's are just going to cancel. So that's why it's quite neat. Dividing them, the r's cancel, those turn into tan, and this gives our fraction. You've got to get it the right way around, of course. So tan alpha equals 2, so that's nice and easy. Uh, we can just get uh, shift inverse tan of 2 in radians, just check that you are in radians, 1.107. Now you could substitute this back in and solve for r, but mm, suboptimal. I mean, um, I suppose if you did it in your calculator, it would be relatively exact. But you can do it uh, another way. You can uh, do it somewhat like it's uh, Pythagoras. We can uh, square them and add them together. So this squared plus this squared uh, is r squared sine squared alpha plus this squared so r squared cos squared alpha, and of course that will equal this squared plus this squared. So that's 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is 1. Uh, and then we can factorize out the r squared and say that r squared bracket sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. Well, of course, we know that sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha equals 1. That's one of the trigonometric identities. So all of that can just disappear because that's 1. And we've just said that this equals uh, 2 squared plus 1. So r equals root 5, which is greater than 0. We don't need r is minus root 5. We don't need the plus or minus because they told us that r is greater than 0. So we only need the positive value. Even though mathematically there would be 2, we're only using the positive one. Give your value of alpha to three decimal places. Uh, okay, yeah, did that. I didn't check that that rounds. Yes, it's a one, so that's okay. Hence or otherwise, solve uh, for theta between naught and pi. So that's obtuse, uh, obtu acute and obtuse angles. Um, so anywhere up to 180 degrees, if we're thinking in degrees. Um, uh, for this, okay, well, this we've all got already, so we're following on from what we've just done, equals minus 1.5. So if we now look and say, okay, well, we've just said that we can write it out uh, with these two values. So let's make a bit of space. Having done all of that, the whole point was to have it as a single expression here, as root 5 times cos of 2 theta plus 1.107 and this equals minus 1.5 and now it's just a simple case of solving divide both sides by root 5 uh, we need to inverse cos to get uh, yes this and then we're going to end up with the value of 2 theta plus 1.107 and we're going to get two answers from that from our cast diagram uh, i remember all students taught crap and uh, this gives me a negative answer, uh, so presumably it will give me an answer either in uh, this quadrant or this one, uh, and we'll need to um, work out the various answers. Now, um, of course, it's only wanting naught to pi, but because it's 2 theta plus a bit, we need to go up to 3... Uh, sorry, 2 pi plus a bit, plus 1.1, um, so that we can catch them all. So we will need both of these answers uh, for here, and then we can code it back to get the theta. Okay? I'm not going to do that bit, because um, if, if you can't do that bit, then I'm sure I've got another video of how to do cast diagrams uh, lurking somewhere that you can look up. But hopefully you can see how uh, this simplification bit went, and now it's just a case of solving the trigonometry. Uh, if I haven't done a video on that and uh, and you don't know how to do the rest of this, then put something in the comments and I'll I'll do the video. Okay, and then and then we get answers. You see, that's that's the clue. Answers. There's several answers. Uh, there's at least two. Small chance there might be a third, but I suspect there'll be two answers. Okay, so now moving on to another example. Uh, a class were asked to solve. 3 cos theta equals 2 minus sine theta for 0 to 360. 
one student expressed the equation in the form like this, and well, that was very sensible, with r is greater than 0 and a is in, yes, so that's good, and correctly solve the equation. Why well, isn't that good for them? Find the values of r and alpha and hence find her solutions. Okay, so what we notice straight away is, well, it doesn't look in the normal way. Uh, but I think it's because they've got cos on one side and sine on the other. So we need to move that round, rearrange it, and say that sine theta, having added it to the other side, plus 3 cos theta equals uh, 2. Now, actually, I was almost expecting it to be our sine, uh, because we've got sine, and, uh, sine plus cos, uh, but uh, actually it is cos, so never mind, it just means that we'll get a minus sign cre uh, creeping in to our um, formula later, but that's okay, not a problem. So let's expand this chap and see uh, what that becomes. So r cos theta minus alpha is going to become r cos of the first cos of the second uh, minus, oh, hang on, there's your minus, aha! So there's not a minus cropping in because they had a minus there. So that makes that sign a plus, doesn't it? Um, which it is, so that's good. Uh, it doesn't make that sign a plus, but it makes this sign a plus. Plus uh, sign of the first, sign of the second, and that matches with what we've got there. So not as tricky as I was expecting. Good. So this is what we should have, which means that um, R cos alpha should equal 3. And, uh, oh, there's an R there, forgot about that one. R sine alpha should equal 1. Okay, well, we can solve these easily enough. We can say that tan alpha equals 1 over 3, doing the second one divided by this first one. And therefore, alpha equals, so let's say shift tan of 1 third equals, nope, because I'm in radians. Try it again. 18.435. Okay. Uh, and then we can find R either by shoving that back in and doing 3 divided by cos of that answer. Let's do that. 3 divided by cos of that answer. So, oops. Just need the bracket when it's in a fraction. So r is 3.16. Let's put the 2 on as well. So r is 3.162. But let's just check that we can do it the proper way. So this squared plus this squared uh, will equal this squared plus this squared. And of course, the sine and the cos are going to uh, become 1 when we add them together. So we get that r squared equals, what's that going to be? 3 squared, 9, 10. And so r equals uh, root 10. So let's see what root 10 looks like. If this is different, I'll be very sad. But there we are, 3.16227766. So interesting that uh, it didn't recognize it uh, as um, an exact value. Because often the calculator, if it knows it's a, a square root, it'll, it'll display it. But it didn't spot it. Uh, but doing it this way, we got the absolute exact answer. So I'm going to say that 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 is a far better way of doing it. Uh, barely takes any effort, but you get the exact answer. No using that with the trig, please. Because um, you'll just get decimals and then get things wrong. Okay, so find the values of r and theta and hence find her solutions. Oh, crikey, this is uh, going to be a huge question then. I won't do this bit, in fact, because this is just the solving like we had before. So if we get rid of all of this... Uh, we don't need that anymore. Then we can rewrite this statement here that root 10 cos, so that finishes there, cos of theta minus 18.435 um, equals 2. And you can divide by the root 10, you can inverse cos, you do your cast diagram, and, uh, and then you can find your solutions, uh, multiple solutions for theta minus 18.4, and then you can find your solutions for theta. So that's a cast diagram question from now on, so I'll leave that on with you. Another student decided to square both sides of the equation and then form a quadratic equation in sine theta. Show that the correct quadratic is this. All right, well, that shouldn't be too bad. Let's give it a go. 
get rid of all of this, make a bit of space. So square both sides, that's legitimate. So square the left-hand side is going to give you 9 cos squared theta. Okay, well, there's no cos squared in this, so we'll have to use some um, angle formula in a minute. And then squaring this, of course, you have to do it in a bracket, don't you? So we're going to get 4 minus double the two things times together. So that's 4 sine theta and then plus sine squared theta. And this should, oh no, I was going to say equals naught, but no, we've got an equals already. So we'll, we'll get that equals by moving it around later. Okay, this looks promising. Uh, we've got a 4, not a 5, but we've got the minus 4 sine theta, so that's good. And we've got a sine theta, but we really need another uh, another 9. And look, here's 9 over here. So, mm, right, this will no doubt be a... Um, uh, a simple case of swapping this cos out for sine. Uh, we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So 1 uh, cos squared, which we want to get rid of, is 1 minus sine squared theta. So we can just replace that and we get 9 minus 9 sine squared theta. So this is looking very good indeed. Equals all of this. And now we can just bring it over. Have 0 on this side. If we bring the 9 sine over, we're going to get 10 sine squared. And if we bring uh, the minus 4 sines already here and looking good, and then bring the 9 across, we're going to get minus 5. And OK, I've got my equals 0 on the wrong side, but it is shown and we're happy. Now we can solve this equation. OK, I'll set this up, but I'm not going to do all of the number work. I'll let you um, finish that off, but just to show you, uh, if you've forgotten how to do this, just pretend that, uh, or not pretend, but substitute something like u equals sine theta. And then you can just solve 10u squared minus 4u minus 5 equals naught. Now that might factorize, it might not, uh, but you can definitely solve that. If Well, presumably you can, I'd hope so, if you're doing this kind of trigonometry. Then you can solve that equation and get two values of u. And then what you can say is, well, OK, if sine theta equals that value and sine theta equals that value, then you can do inverse sine for each of them. And of course, a cast diagram, because you're going to get two answers from that within the range 0 to 360. So four answers in total for theta, two from well, two u values from the quadratic and then two trigonometry values, uh, you know, theta values from each of those because of the cast diagram. Explain why not all of the answers satisfy this thing. Um, I think what you should probably do is try them. So you've got four answers for theta. Try them and see what happens. Uh, and I think the what you find is that because you squared the answer, um, you know you uh, because we squared it. If if this equals this and that's all well and square it when we then come out and square root it and we have and, you know solve the quadratic it's going to give us negative answers as well or at least two answers uh, presumably you know one will be positive negative you'll know this uh, but even if it doesn't give one positive one negative it'll give two answers and it's quite possible that this was not true uh, before we squared it but because we squared it it introduced that other value to come in uh, but the, the, what you want to do there is, is try them and see which ones work. And you might find that the answers from the positive u work and the answers from the negative value of u that you've then solved for theta don't work or, or possibly the other way around. OK, I'm, I'm guessing you can tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I suspect that both of these values either will or won't work and opposite for the other. Appreciate I've left you a reasonable amount of uh, solving to do there. Um, if you need help with that and I haven't done videos on that already, then let me know and I can do that. It's turned into another giant uh, length video, but it is quite a big topic. Uh, well, not a big topic, but quite a niggly thing to do. So I hope uh, it was helpful to see those examples if indeed you're still watching. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, the focus is really on getting... Uh, those sine plus cos um, situations into this one thing by expanding this with the addition formulae. Uh, obviously, you still have to be able to solve quadratics and solve the trig and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but as I say, that's hopefully covered in another video. Right, I shall stop rambling and let you go. Thanks very much and cheerio.